Jim Cole. And welcome to Whiskey Hill. I'm here with Whiskey Hill today, and uh, we're just gonna chat about what you guys do. Uh, we're out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. I literally just drove for two days straight to get here, and this is a pretty epic place. How did you guys end up in this barn behind us? It's uh, a good question. Uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, Cole and I worked together at a ranch, and uh, and we had lost our jobs there, and uh, decided that we needed to move the shop. And uh, Jeff and Patty, our friends here, uh, graciously offered for us to to move into their shop and set up a new home base. We had a smaller shop uh, over at the ranch that we were working at, and then when we left there and we moved in here. Um, it was a huge upgrade. I mean, it was a lot bigger, a lot nicer. Um, we even get to use some of the equipment that's already in the shop here, so it added to our tool list, and pretty stoked to have these views every day. Awesome. We started Whiskey Hill probably about, what, two? Two and a half. Two years yeah. ago. Um, it's been gradual, but the idea itself came from, uh, we actually had to go on a work trip to Santa Barbara uh, for the ranch that we worked at and uh, we got dressed up one night the people we worked for were taking us out and I had this wood cuff on that I had bought in college it was cheap it was nothing special but I really liked it and um, he saw it and he had one of those moments I could make that and I was like I've got some ideas so get ready, you're gonna have to make that. <laughs> um, and that's kind of where it started and it was slow. I mean, he made it and I don't know, it just kind of has and been evolving. And made a better one because yours had a turquoise <laughs> ring in it where the yeah. other one did not. Yeah. Nice. You improved it and we reshaped it. And the whole evolution started of making a better wooden cuff and it evolved into more wooden jewelry and collaboration with wood and metal. So Cole will come up with a design generally and uh, and I will say yes I can do that or <laughs> I don't think that's gonna hold up. He doesn't usually say that's not gonna work. Usually he'll say I think I can figure that out and sometimes it takes three or four tries but I feel like you always persevere even if it means making me your, your own tools to do so. Yeah. There's we, a lot of do. making our own tools awesome. <laughs> in the process. And jigs, yep. And uh, so yeah, she will she'll come to me and say, you know, can you make this? And then uh, I will, will put it together for her, and then she takes it from there and sees about putting some of the metal smithing elements in 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 the wood piece, mm -hmm. or vice versa. I'll I'll try to make a wood piece that'll fit into a metal piece that she's already working on. It's always a game of who has to make their piece first. Do I have to make the metal element to fit the wood, or? Vice you want to, but you want to make your piece first because yeah, it's a lot then you harder have to, match to, it. To, to fit it in to <laughs> the exact but dimensions. Of when we first fit. started, all the pieces were all wood, and I was actually making a lot of wood cuffs. Um, and then when I realized that I could incorporate more of the metal, I I wanted to stick to the medium that I enjoy, and he wanted to stick to the medium he enjoys. I still like doing the wood, but he's much much better at it. I learned to uh, to start working with wood with my granddad who was a uh, he was a carpenter uh, a log home builder and uh, just hanging out with him and his shop and all of his stuff it just kind of just came naturally, naturally I guess yeah uh, and then moved away from home and just started training horses and uh, was able to just kind of keep doing some woodworking on the side there uh, building furniture and that kind of stuff and then uh, I bought a lathe and started a, an elk call business and started turning on the lathe and uh, just turned into kind of what you see here today. The process of making jewelry, it's something that I always knew I wanted to do. Um, I grew up, my grandmother lived with me and she always had amazing jewelry, accessories and the works and so when I was young I would put things together, beads and you know whatnot and uh, I went on to go to school for uh, fine arts with a concentration in graphic design. Um, I did my senior thesis on um, found materials into large cuffs so things like copper piping, burlap, um, wood, um, so I had done stuff like that 
10 plus years before I'd ever met Duncan. And then um, I continued to bead and sell on Etsy uh, and I got a job with a local jeweler where they actually taught me how to metalsmith. Um, and so I didn't work for them for long, but I got the basics under my belt and then everything else has been self-taught. And um, I've only been metalsmithing for as long as we've been doing Whiskey Hill. We met each other uh, through the ranch that we had worked at. Uh, I was working there and then uh, Cole came in as a, as a barn wrangler. Yeah, he was my boss. <laughs> and uh, we just started working together and then uh, like I said, we, we went on that trip and then just kind of started making plans to try to make these cuffs. With a small business, there's a huge learning curve. I mean, we're both creative minds and we both love creating, but in order to sell, you know, you have to, you have to learn business and, and produce. We both quickly realized we didn't like to reproduce. Mm -hmm. um, we like to make originals, but we also learned as a business strategy that we would have to have a line that we could reproduce because it's extremely time consuming to photograph originals if you're selling mainly online. So that was yeah. a learning curve that we're still figuring out. I feel like one of our major hurdles was uh, sizing for our cuffs. Oh yeah. And we first started off just, it was, they're gonna be custom pieces. People would call in and or order online their measurements. We discovered really quickly that that was pretty tough to 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 just shape each one. So then we decided to start making small, medium, larges, and a little easier to make those sizes. And then people just order one that they think will fit, you know. And then that way, yeah. that, that that definitely helps sales versus trying to make individual pieces. Yeah, that was a huge hurdle actually right from the start. We'd wear the cuffs and people would think that they were awesome and they would want them and so we were like, okay, we can sell them and then realizing that we weren't selling in person and trying to do it online and people not understanding that wood doesn't bend or trying to bend wood, which is... Or breaking really one <laughs> when they tried to put it on yeah. because it was the wrong size. <laughs> Even though you've written many disclaimers on... I mean, they are solid, they are sturdy. We did have one design that we wanted to make work but just the reality was it was too thin and that was a hurdle because every time you put a product out in the world and it doesn't work the way you want it to, it's, it's pretty devastating. I would, get, I would take it really personally if someone you know, snapped a piece or, and you know, we immediately addressed it, replaced it, or, and eventually got rid of that design because we realized it just didn't, didn't have the lasting power, um, modified it, made it better, didn't have the problems, but Anytime you interact with a customer that has an issue with your product, you get it's, really upset. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it, yeah, hurts. it, it hurts. hurts. It hurts because you're so proud of it. And yeah. then they're like, let me tell you what's wrong with it. Like, yeah. It, it's not. So, but the, the bringing the fitting to small, medium, large is huge because we were spending almost as much time trying to figure out how to make measurements work and corresponding with the customer as we were actually making the piece. And we realized we had sure. to cut that part out to make it profitable. I mean, we were doubling our workload. Um, I was doing a lot of the corresponding, saying, you know, is this going to work? Does this make sense to you? And he's going, no, it still doesn't make sense. And, and the shape looks completely yeah. wrong. I don't and know how they're <laughs> we measuring. We made some, like, Goliath cuffs. We're like, I don't think, I don't think his wrist is that big. <laughs> right. That doesn't no. look right. A lot of our pieces definitely have a Western look to them, and I think both of us coming from a horse background um, I like really chunky rugged mixed material jewelry I always have um, I have bigger hands bigger frame and um, we also wanted to have men's pieces and he likes wearing his cuff so we kind of jumped into the men's world of jewelry too because there's not a lot of that out there no so um, but yeah the mountains the horses the lifestyle I think it all inspires what we do. I've always been creative. I like to work with my hands and I like having a lot of things going on. So I think having a small business like Whiskey Hill, um, I like having all the facets of business and creation and customer interaction. And so I think I'd like to be able to sustain myself on that. I would love to be able to, uh, to make this my full-time job where I could focus on designing and manufacturing 
uh, in the shop and for Whiskey Hill. I mean, it's not easy, and there's days where you really question yeah. why you're doing this. Yeah. If you haven't had an order for a little bit, you're like, oh my god, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Or, um, And then you get flooded with orders, and you're like, okay, I can do this. So <laughs> it comes and goes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the days where everything you touch breaks or doesn't fit or the equipment isn't working like it should be and you're just and it usually happens when you have a big order and you're in a hurry <laughs> when you're under pressure and when you're under pressure and trying to get stuff done you cannot get it done it's, we can be found on uh, on a website we have whiskeyhillco.com is the is the website and then uh, Instagram and then uh, Facebook Yep. Which which Cole manages all of that because <laughs> I have Duncan is no not desire. on any social media. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so the website and um, we are in one store in Maine, a store called Minka, um, in Kenny Bunkport, Maine. I will also include in the description of the video a link to their website and where you can find out more about Whiskey Hill and what they do here. So please take a look below, subscribe, follow, and check out their website. <laughs>